Now, with this basic knowledge of physics, we can start move on to our ABC approach and start with the first thing that is airway. Now, the utility of ultrasound and airway is first for one to first determine whether airway is difficult or not, second to help guide endotracheal intubation to confirm whether our tube is placed in the right place or not. In fact, in the current ACLS guidelines, ultrasound has also been incorporated as a tool to confirm airway correct endotracheal tube placement. Besides that, we should always be prepared as clinicians to deal with the worst kind of scenarios. For example, if we were to face this kind of a patient with this large swelling in the neck, with a difficult or a compromised airway and we want to go in for a cricothyroidotomy in an emergency. Obviously, palpation is not going to help me because of this large swelling in the airway. The airway may be totally kinked, deviated, in all probability it is kinked and deviated in this case. And unless I know where exactly my trachea lies, there is no way that I can go ahead and secure the airway of this patient with a cricothyroidotomy or an emergency tracheostomy. So, how do I go about it unless I know where it is? So, this is where the ultrasound comes into play. As we can see in this patient, the airway has been grossly displaced much to the, light, uh, to the right, totally displaced to the right and lying somewhere on the side. And if we place ultrasound probe along my trachea, I am going to be seeing this series of black, black small, small rings. These are the individual tracheal rings and the bright white line which is beneath the tracheal rings is the air tissue interface. As I told you in the previous uh, part of the talk that air produces bright white artifacts. So, they can see the continuous air artifact and the tracheal rings on top and this only occurs if I have my probe right on top of the trachea. So, that is how ultrasound helps in a bedside immediate localization of the airway. It helps in telling us where the airway is deviated or not, whether it is kinged or not and also gives you an idea of surrounding structures which may be actually compressing the airway. If you have a large hematoma in the neck which is displacing your airway, you can see it. If we have created a hematoma by because of inadvertent arterial puncture and that expanding hematoma is compressing the airway, the patient is having a mild difficulty in breathing we can actually visualize it real time and then make a note and follow it up over real time whether it is further progressing or not. So, that is going to determine whether this patient requires emergency intubation at the outset or we can just wait for some more time and watch. So, we can be much more safer in our practice.